when you think of the Midlands, you think of this and this and these, and in my case these. But there's another side to the Midlands, a paranormal side. In this video, these are some of the most extreme haunted places in the Midlands, UK. So if you're in the pub, drinking your pint, or waiting for a train at the train station, the person sitting next to you might not be what they seem. Canna Chase has a lot of paranormal things happen, from ghosts to UFOs to cryptids, but this video is about ghosts, so we'll be looking at the ghosts in Canna Chase. One ghost is the one of William Paget, the first Marquis of Anglesey. His house was on the southeastern edge of Canna Chase. His ghost is seen riding a horse through the woods and as a ghostly pack of dogs following him. And at the War Cemetery, there has been several sightings of World War II and World War I soldiers there. There was a military camp in Cannock Chase, which was used by soldiers from New Zealand. And it was also used for a prisoner of war hospital. It had several, it had over a thousand patients and the cemetery had 500 burials which were German and Austrian soldiers. Other ghosts are of an elderly gentleman with a cane and a wide brimmed hat and it's thought to have been a former gamekeeper and has been seen walking through the woods and a bedraggled lady walking through the woods as well as being seen. This is one I found very strange, a parachutist who seems to be stuck in mid-air, perpetually falling from the sky, which is that's quite strange. There is a phantom cyclist who disappears in front of onlookers and also a ghostly monk. And there's also the black-eyed children which is believed to be the ghost of a girl who was murdered in Cannock Chase. She was dressed in white and there's also a report on the Express and Star in 2015. This is it now, the on now. The Gifford Arms had a lot of paranormal things happen, stuff happen. It said glasses moving or exploding for no reason. Doors slamming. One of the ghosts was said to be the ghost of Anne Horton, the local lady of the night. And it says she follows men she takes a liking to. It seems Anne has lingered from before the present pub was built. When there was the old building there. And in the bar, a little girl is said to have been seen playing in there and the apparition of an old landlord John Still is seen walking through the bar which has been seen going straight through it I've been lucky enough to know someone who actually worked in the Gifford Arms who had their own experiences there and worked there with the strange goings on a lady named Kath she was in the cellar one day and she went upstairs and the lights went out. She ran up the stairs in the dark, told the staff they weren't funny, thinking it was a practical joke. And they pointed out she was the only one with the key to the cellar. 
Kath always said in one particular room she felt uncomfortable and it was a room up the stairs she felt whatever it was in there didn't like her and one night when the landlord was away at an all night party Kath stayed over to lock up the landlord said she could sleep over she slept on the sofa when at 4am she had woken up and heard a loud footsteps in the hall and the door to the dreaded room that she didn't like shut she thought the landlord was back because the party might not have been a very good party she went back to sleep thinking that he was back she went downstairs the next morning spoke to another member of staff and mentioned the landlord had been back the other member of staff said he's not been back the car, his car's not there this is very very strange indeed Not exactly a haunted place, but more a haunted awesome piece of machinery. The Lincoln Bomber, Avro Lincoln Bomber, with a serial number RF398, first flown on the 9th of June 1944. But the first account of any paranormal activity was in 1979, when the engineers were restoring it, saw a figure heading towards it, then disappear. As he turned towards it, the second engineer was in the cockpit and there was no way could it have been anyone else as he was still in the cockpit. The next morning, the same engineers found parts of the aircraft which were not there the night before and they were the last to leave the night before also. So in the 80s, when the anger was being locked, when the member of staff saw someone or something moving the shadows, switched the lights on, thinking there was an intruder, but no one was there. There was also been a sighting of an airman in battle dress in the hangar, and also this is strange, a head in the helmet of the gun turret, and there was also loud footsteps in the vicinity of the plane and a phantom pilot was spotted by a cameraman filming an episode of Wish You Were Here. It's also, this has also been on a Radio 4 show, the subject on this has, in 1991 and it was also on a TV programme on ITV, Strange But True. This is where it gets really crazy though, and very strange. An electrician was working 15 feet above the hangar floor. When the electrician fell, he thought at the time he was a goner, he thought he was going to die. And he's already fell before, injured his spine from another plane, a smaller plane. As he was expecting to hit the concrete, he somehow was being held up by something they also believe the spirit it was the spirit of the master pilot Hillier who loved the plane when he was alive and understandably so it's an awesome piece of machinery and he said when he dies he's going to haunt his baby he died in an air crash not far from Cosford this is a very very strange haunting This is a place I visited a lot as a kid and take my kids there at Christmas to see Santa. Norticart Farm was built in the 1600s and was owned by the Undrill family. It's now owned by Wolverhampton City Council. It's basically a tourist attraction now where they have a tea room and a calf. The, one of the apparitions is that of a young farm worker whose lover was a servant girl who was sent to nearby Mowsley Old Hall to entertain King Charles II. 
who was hiding after the Battle of Worcester. Charles was refused shelter at the farm, so this could have been to appease him. The servant girl disappeared never to be seen again. The young farm worker who was heartbroken at this is said to haunt the farm building waiting for the servant girl to return. Also in the building in the tea room kitchen a lady is seen sweeping the floor before disappearing and a gentleman in Victorian clothes is seen in the mirror of the lady's toilet and doffs his hat he then vanishes into thin air too also the apparition of a cavalier was seen one Christmas by two stall holders at a Christmas fete to ascend at the stable staircase then pass through the wall at the top he has been seen in the farmyard accompanied by non-existent horses sounds and in the room upstairs the sound of loud footsteps and someone falling the room that is heard in is above the parlour and was found to be locked by the member of staff who heard it I've been here many times myself and I've never seen anything it would be very interesting When New Street Station was being built, a Jewish cemetery was dug up to make room for it. So it is believed that there's a lot of paranormal activity at the station because of this. And it's believed that the station is cursed because of some of the tragic events that have happened since it's been built. The station had two trains collide in 1921 which claimed the lives of three passengers. Platform 4 saw four suicides. The most well known was in 1936 and that was engine driver Walter, Walter Hart Hartles at the age of 68 was having marital difficulties and shot himself in the chest in the waiting room. Since he died he has been spotted passing through the station still in his uniform reliving his suicide and looking lost. Also his granddaughter went on a ghost walk there and realised it was her great grandfather that they were talking about at the ghost walk. And passengers have seen the spirit of a man named Claude who died when he poisoned himself in Victorian times. Like Walter, Claude appears in the clothes that he wore when he died and he sticks out like a sore thumb so you'd probably see him walking around straight away and New Street Station is so haunted that it's been said if you visit there after dark you wouldn't need a Ouija board to see a spirit the platform is said to be very spooky and not for the faint hearted definitely qualifies as an extreme haunted place in the Midlands Number six, Dudley Castle Dudley Castle is definitely regarded as an extreme haunted place. It has been regarded as one of the most haunted castles in England and even the world. There's been so much paranormal activity reported for the last hundred years there. There was even a live TV show on the Sky Channel UK Living called Most Haunted and it was done on the Halloween. The many things to happen there was a display of key rings fell off for no reason in the castle gift shop. One of the most famous ghosts is that of the Grey Lady. It's to believe to be the ghost of Dorothy Beaumont who died at the castle during childbirth. The daughter died first, Dorothy died a short time later. She's seen wandering around the castle because her wishes were not granted before she died. 
She has to be buried by her daughter and her husband to attend the funeral. Because this didn't occur, she continued to be tormented and to this day cannot rest. She is often seen in the keep or in the pub, which is called the Grey Lady, ironically, the tavern, the Grey Lady Tavern. There has been unexplained sounds and drops in temperature in the pub and alarms going off in the middle of the night with no explanation whatsoever and a strange mist in the bar. The chapel that has a stone coffin which contains the body of the most feared lord of the castle, John Semery, Summery. People have seen legs beside the coffin believed to be John himself. People have reported their clothes being tucked and their bodies prodded. One occasion, a little girl flipped over in a chair at a paranormal investigation, and another investigation, a dark, shadowy figure was caught on camera, and also a strange grinding sounds were heard as well, coming from the chapel, and another ghost is that of a little drummer boy who was killed during a battle by a single bullet by a 17th century musket, He's heard banging his drum at night as if it was going to battle, about to start. It's allegedly bad luck if you see or hear him. The castle was built in 1071, so no wonder there's a lot of paranormal activity. The old hall is where Charles II hid after the Battle of Worcester. It now belongs to the National Trust, but it has been haunted by defeated Scottish soldiers and have been said to be seen outside the front of the building. There's also the sound of non-existent bagpipes being heard. And in the chapel, there's quite an eerie feeling people say they get when they go in there, like icy chills. And some people have seen a lady in old fashioned clothes walking around on occasions, but no one has a clue who she is or doesn't know who she is. One tour guide also saw when she was in the king's room some heavily weighted chains being moved by invisible hands during a tour. And on the same tour, a door opened and closed to the Whitgreave room while the tour guide was stood in the corridor so there was no way she could see if opened or closed the door and the same tour guide but on a different tour this time had a weird experience of feeling an entity pass through her which made her feel dizzy that definitely makes Mosley Old Hall a place that's extremely haunted number eight Cemetery in Birmingham is said to be haunted by a lady in white and a man wearing long black boots and a lady in Victorian clothes. There is even photographic evidence as well. The picture was taken in the same spot by Moor Lane entrance near the M6 motorway. They were taken by a lady who was putting flowers on her daughter's grave. It was a foggy day and she decided to take some photos of the fog. When she got home, she saw the pictures of the three spirits on there. There was articles also in the Birmingham Live website on the 5th of February 2021 and even in a national newspaper, the Daily Star as well, also on the same date, 5th of February 2021. So this makes this place one of the most extreme haunted places in the Midlands. The Four Crosses was built in 1636. There's been several tragic deaths there, suicides, and most recently a young boy was run over in the 1980s outside. It used to be a couching inn. The pub itself more recently has had several strange paranormal things happen, such as glasses have been smashed for no reason whatsoever, unexplained footsteps, and the ghost of a young girl are seen. The ladies' toilet is the most active area of the pub itself. 
there is the sound of children crying in there. <laughs> and one strange thing happened in 2005. The manager at the time was opening up. She went in the ladies' toilet and saw two flowers crossed over the toilet seat. Nobody else had done it. She didn't do it. Then she went past shortly after, past the ladies' toilet, and she was stunned to find a heavy candlestick had moved from the fireplace blocking the ladies' toilet door. There's also the ghost of a round head being seen in the gents' toilet, and a man in a dark cloak is seen in the car park on rainy evenings, just staring at the building. This is how haunted this place is. It caused one staff member to quit because the experience she had freaked her out. She saw the apparition of a teenage girl she had unkempt hair, ragged clothes, and she walked through the wall. This has been said to be one of the most haunted pubs in England, in Britain. It's even featured on a programme on the Sky Channel yesterday called Great British Ghosts. The pub definitely is an extreme haunted place in the Midlands. It was a place that I went to as a kid on many occasions with my dad and uh, visited it but never had any experiences myself. Number 10, Patchell Hall. Patchell Hall is said to be haunted by a lady in white, but couldn't find much else about it on the internet when I was doing my research. But all I found it was over the years, it was a stately home, a rehabilitation unit, and in the 80s it was an orthopaedic centre. It was while it was in the orthopaedic centre in the 80s that a dear friend of mine was staying there, and he saw people have experiences there. One was a win the windows kept opening, and there was too hot for people to open them, and none of the nurses said they'd opened them. Also, a nurse on a first night shift left after having some really weird experiences and the other strange thing the pa another patient went on the grounds to exercise to get to stretch his legs a bit he came running back looking all distressed he said something screamed in his face and there was actually nothing there it was just an invisible thing just seemed to scream in his face it would be very interesting to talk to these people who had these experiences but to me this does qualifies an extremely haunted place.